Hi, everyone. I'm Heather. Um, I'm here. I also work for Canonical, so you got two back-to-backs. Um, I'm here to talk about bugs. Um, you know, we can't have, we don't know what's wrong with software unless people file bugs, so we can't spell bugs without you. Um, so, you know, bugs matter for a lot of reasons. They matter to the developer because they might not be aware. They use the software in a different way than the user might. Um, and, you know, duplicates do happen. Don't be afraid of them. Um, you know, do, do your best to try and see if, you know, the bug has already been filed. But if you don't find it, then go ahead and file a quick bug. Um, the more visible um, the app is, the more useful that bug that you might have found is. Um, but then also for users, um, you know, issues can serve as documentation. Like if, I mean, it's not ideal, right? We want to have perfect documentation everywhere we go. But if you find an issue and you just file it, then if someone else stumbles across that, then they might find the issue too and be like, oh yeah, it affects me too, right? Or it might, you know, the, the solution might be in the comments. It might be a workaround or something that can help someone else pass that issue. Um, so yeah, like worst case, it's a breadcrumb for other other users. Um, and then, of course, we always want this to happen. Um, the bug may be fixed, and then it improves the experience for everyone. So um, the more detailed a bug report is, then the easier it is to fix, and the less like back and forth you have to do with the developer. And yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about like time efficient bug filing because I'm sure that. You know, many of us have, have spent an hour filing a bug, right? Gathering all the information, trying to make it perfect. And so that can be kind of daunting when you go and you find an issue and you're like, oh, I don't have an hour to file this bug, right? So if we can just know exactly some steps that make it a lot easier for the developers to act on, then it's better for our time and better for their time and just all around better. Um, so, I mean, we're always in a hurry. It never seems like we have time. So if we can just do it quickly, that's the best. Um, and it m makes our time investment much more worth it. Um, again, in the approach, the more details, the better. Um, because it reduces, like, you know, the back and forth you have to do with the developer. I've said that. Um, you, so you can be meticulous without spending the entire day or a significant portion of your time, right? Um, so. If you know where to search the project for existing issues, then you can do a quick cursory search to see if you know maybe an important string is already there. Um, yeah, and then you can file a bug if, it, if you don't find it. So what does a, a good bug actually look like? So there are some do's and don'ts. Um, you want to include like your operating system, the package software version, obviously. Um, and you know any sort of relevant environment information. If you're having a networking problem, then maybe tell people like what your weird firewall, you know, rules are. Um, any sort of relevant logs, um, you know, what happened and what you expected to happen, and of course reproduce your steps because that's going to help the developer like go and try and reproduce it. And if they can reproduce it, they're more likely to fix it. Um, do not file a bug that's critical and say it doesn't work. It's that's like the worst, um, uh, or or super highly opinionated. People will file bugs and be like, "This is the worst issue in the world right now, and it needs to be fixed." And it's like, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> recognize the developers are people and have their own like roadmap and priorities and that kind of stuff. So try and just be like, cut and dry. Here's the facts. Here's what happened. Not, oh, it's the end of the world, right? Um, and, and, you know, try and file it in the right place. That's not always the easiest. I know, like, at Canonical, we have, like, Launchpad and we have GitHub. I mean, do, do your best. But if it go kind of goes in the wrong place, like, probably the right person is going to see it and, and forward it to the right place, right? Um, so if we want to look at a couple of different types of systems, we'll start with Debian-based systems like Ubuntu. So Debian has report bug um, that you can use to help, you know, it'll It'll use mail uh, to automatically send it or generate like the email type format that then you can email. Um, Ubuntu has Ubuntu bug that that automatically like files a launchpad bug with the you know uh, write logs and stuff. But you know sometimes we forget to use these tools and we just go and file a bug. And if you do that, which is which is cool, 
then you can you know, attach that information later with apport collect. Um, you kind of type the command with the bug number and then it automatically collects the relevant logs and then goes and attaches it. Um, you know, if your issue is at boot time, then you have dmessage will help, you know, sort out issue. Uh, journal control is a beautiful thing. Um, so journal control dash F, right? You can just like take, watch the logs when you reproduce the problem and capture, copy paste, whatever those relevant logs are into the bug and easy peasy. And then, you know, it's always worth reading the man page about various tools, including journal control. So dash B0 is one of my favorites because that means this boot. If you want to talk about last boot, then it's dash B-1, dash right? Um, and, and so on. Um, if, it was a, if it was a crash, then you can go check, check the crash file or the, the, the crash directory for a crash log and attach that. And then if you want to, I mean, again, we want to attach like whatever the software version is. So you can use apt cache policy, you can use dpackage l there are several different ways, right? The apt cache policy will also give you information about the repo that it came from. So a little bit more than just the version, so that's useful. If we look at Fedora-based systems, which is not my area of expertise, but I talked to <laughs> some friends to get this information. Um, so ABRT, abort, I guess, is probably how you pronounce it. Um, uh, it can be configured for automatic bug reporting. And then there's SOS report. It gathers a lot of stuff. It sounds like Ubuntu or Apport Collect, but it, it can contain like sensitive information that maybe you don't want to include all of that in the bug report, but it's useful for troubleshooting on the spot with the engineer, grabbing the relevant logs to attach to your bug report. Um, and again, you know, because Fedora uses systemd, then we still have the same journal control commands that are useful. Um, and then you can use rpm-qa and grep for the package name to get the version. Um, and you can use DNF list to grab the repo information. So if you just ask yourself the same questions every time you file a bug, you're, you're likely to get the right information that you want to attach to it. Um, like, are there logs created when the issue happens? Um, is there standard out if you, if you run the, the application from the command line? Sometimes that happens, right? Um, that you could attach to it. Um, any sort of relevant environment information, again, like the networking one's a good one. If you've set up some special firewall rules or if you've got like a VPN that you're going through, then you know that, that that's important. Um, if you can provide a short video, so in GNOME, you can do just print screen, which is beautiful, um, and you know, take a little video of the actual issue or even screenshots. Uh, Katie has something similar. You can hit the print screen and then you can go tools and then record screen to take a little video. Um, and and you know, again, like what happened and what did you expect to happen? Um, what were you doing when the problem occurred? Can you get it to happen again? Um, and always as a bonus, like does it happen on another distro? I uh, definitely have VMs for Debian and Fedora that I will go like, well, this happens in GNOME on Ubuntu, but what does it happen? Does it is it coming from Debian or does it happen on Fedora as well? Like try and isolate the issue. But again, like kind of it's a time cost analysis there if it's worth it. And and don't let the perfect bug be the enemy of the good bug. No. It's a little joke because it's actually Voltaire that said something like that. Is it software? <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have any questions, then email me because it's a lightning talk. So, um, yeah, thanks. File bugs. <laughs> <laughs>